I'm Stan Boltz. I'm the State Range Management Specialist with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service out of Huron, South Dakota. We're going to demonstrate the rainfall simulator today and basically look at five different management scenarios on, on rangelands. The five scenarios we have picked out today, these are all on essentially the same ecological site, a clay ecological site. It's in the same MLRA. So we have a Essentially, this is a prairie dog town uh, that we got this from. This is a blue grandma sod. It's received pretty heavy grazing for a long period of time, and, and so we've got that characteristic blue grandma sod. This is a Kentucky bluegrass sod right here. There is a few native species in here, but mainly Kentucky bluegrass. This here was kind of right across the fence on the, on the section line road. That's a smooth brome dominated. So this is a kind of a long-term no non-use situation. And then at the at the end here we have our uh, more native dominated grass here. We've got some big blue stem and some cytos grandma and there is still some Kentucky bluegrass in there but so we're going to run this simulator now and basically see how these things come out. So we're going to uh, put a couple inches of water on this. These buckets in front are going to let us see how much runoff we have from each management type. And the, the jars in back will show us what the infiltration is down through those soil plots. Another thing to kind of wa watch for is this backboard right here. should start to see the, the impact of, of raindrops on the soil surface where you have very little vegetation and you'll start to see what happens uh, as those raindrops impact the soil surface and start to uh, transport that soil. One of the things you can see here on the prairie dot town is water is ponding on the surface and uh, We'd probably be seeing more runoff actually than what we're seeing, except it's just coming off the sides as well. But you can see the water ponding on the surface. Another thing you can see on the splashboard here is the rain raindrops are detaching soil particles and lifting them off and, and actually hitting that board on the back there. The runoff on the blue grama is cleaner than the prairie dot town. Our runoff on the bluegrass is going somewhere else, apparently, because we're not g getting any on it. Uh, we're seeing infiltration pretty much what I expect. The native is by far the most infiltration. We're at, uh, where are we at now, a little over an inch of rain, and, and it's almost filled up that jar. Infiltration on the smooth brome and the bluegrass is almost half of that. For some reason, we're not seeing the runoff. There should be a lot more runoff since there's not very much infil or as much infiltration. We must have a hole in the side of our pan, or it's just going off to the edge somewhere. We're not catching it down here, but but you can definitely see it in the infiltration. That jar back there is just about ready to go over the top now. These two are just halfway. Blue grama. Again, a lot of the runoff on this pan here is kind of hit heading over the edge as well. But you can see the runoff from the Blue Grandma Sod is a little bit cleaner than that Prairie Dog Town. But they're both pretty high in sediment. Infiltration is, is lowest on the Prairie Dog Town out of all of them. So you can see that obviously one of the aspects here is a lack of vegetation and lack of intercept of those raindrops is causing disturbance of that soil surface and which is increasing runoff. When you alter the plant community, um, you change the soil structure and the aggregate stability in that soil uh, below the surface. And that's what's really affecting the infiltration. And so uh, it's a combination of factors. The, the, the degraded plant community 
it, as well with the bluegrass causes reduced infiltration because your soil porosity goes down, your bulk density goes up, and your soil structure just becomes a lot less, a lot less natural. So you can see on the on the native grass, we're well over topped on our infiltration jar. It's been running over for a while now. Uh, out of the more vegetated samples, the uh, the smooth brome has the most runoff. Um, the Kentucky bluegrass, I'm sure, would have had more runoff here, but we must have it. It must be running off the side somewhere on that pan. I think we can probably shut her down. So you can see that, um, like I said, the uh, infiltration is the highest on the native, kind of intermediate on, on on these two over here. The smooth brome actually in this case was the least amount of the more vegetated. And then with the, the blue grandma and the prairie dog town, they've got by far the least infiltration and the most runoff. But I, I do believe that the the sediment yield is higher on the on the prairie dog town than the blue grandma sod. One of the things that uh, I was always told was yeah if you have a if you overgraze and you have a blue grandma sod uh, you might get a lot of runoff but it'll be clean runoff but in these uh, infiltration runoff uh, runs that we've been doing we've seen that the runoff isn't as clean as is what they what I formerly thought it would be it is quite quite dirty compared to the runoff over here with more grass so I'll take this off and flip one of these over just to see Yeah, so we've ran uh, about two inches of water on this, and that's a two-inch pan, and the water hasn't even, I mean, that soil is still dry down here, really dry. Most of it's dry, actually. <laughs> so there's been very little infiltration through that, uh, through that prairie dog town soil. Let's see what the blue grandma looks like. There again, still dry for most of that that area. And down, I mean that water only soaked in maybe a half inch in there when you look at the side view there. So that's uh, not dry, soaking in very fast in there. With and the, that's evidenced by the amount of runoff that we have. I suspect if we compare that to the native, we'll see a lot different. That one is wet all the way through. <laughs> and that just shows how much more infiltration, how much more water we're getting in the profile in those uh, situations that are a little better. And of course, every, every inch of water that you put into the soil versus running off is gonna grow more grass. And I've heard every, anywhere from 150 to 200 more uh, pounds per inch of, of water that gets into the soil. Just out of curiosity, since we're doing this. See what smooth brome looks like. It's probably it's even dry in parts of it. So the smooth brome has uh, already lost some of its structure down below, and where it's got the smooth brome on it, and the water's just not getting in. Well, I might as well do the last one. <laughs> wet. When you have management that leads to uh, either typically the Kentucky bluegrass or the blue grandma sod, you know you can get by in the wet years because there's enough rain at the surface that gets into the soil that grows some grass for that year. But if you get into a drought situation you're gonna you're gonna be impacted much more drastically in those drought years. The people that have managed better and gotten that 
that water throughout their profile, they can carry themselves through a drought and get a lot more uh, grass production even in the drought years. Normally though when I run this when I run the simulator I'll just take these samples all from uh, the same area but they're all managed with you know with cattle grazing. It's the Kentucky bluegrass usually runs off three or four times as much and for today for some reason. It's probably your management. <laughs> you, you, you made it not work for us. <laughs> but uh, usually the Kentucky bluegrass even in the same pasture a lot of times I'll take the bluegrass right out of the same pasture with the native right by it and you'll see a difference there. And we did on the brome. You know, the brome was still dry below there, so um, we did see it there, but um, not not on the Kentucky bluegrass today. But normally, yeah, it's uh, your native grass has by far the highest infiltration. Smooth brome is usually in between, and then Kentucky bluegrass is the worst normally. <laughs>